So today we're going to talk about inheritance. Who can tell me a little bit about what they know so far about inheritance or not and not tech focus, just like what does the word inheritance mean? Early retirement. Early retirement. If you get an inheritance, okay. So outside of the scope of being baller, um, what what does inheritance typically encompass? Proceeding something? Okay. So it's like something being before you? No, receiving. receiving. Oh. Oh, inheriting something. Receiving. Okay. Inheriting something. Uh, so receiving something. Okay. In general. So. <laughs> So besides money and receiving something, um, talk a little more about receiving something. So it's where are you receiving something from when you're inheriting something? A parent usually or family member? Something outside of yourself, typically a parent or something before you, right? Anything else? So oftentimes when we think about inheritance, besides when we think about like getting a bunch of money, um, it's receiving something that existed before, right? And oftentimes, so if we think about a, like a parent and child relationship, for example, right? Like we have all inherited things from our parents, traits that we might have, behaviors that we might encompass, right? At the same time, we are not our parents, right? We are a wholly different autonomous person objects, right? We are people that are inheriting some traits from our parents and creating new things on our own, right? Um, so similarly in uh, the programming world, there are many languages, including Groovy, that have this same kind of behavior where we have objects, that have certain sets of traits or behaviors. And we're either um, realizing that when we're building things, so like for example, I have, I can create, let's say I'll go back all the way, always go back to class dog, right? Can I open all open? One second. Okay. Okay, so I have class dog and oh, why is this wrong? Anybody have an idea? There we go. Okay, so I have class dog. Okay. What are some things, or some traits that we might ex uh, assume a dog should be able to have or behavior said a dog should be able to do? Okay, dog should be able to bark. Bark, not bard. I said poop. Maybe like. Right? Okay. So that's a lot of things. Um, dogs might also like, in terms of traits, what are some traits that a dog has? And then we can build this out type of, just like one or two. So we have, a dog has a name, right? Breed. Dog has breed. Okay, we'll just have two. And then, uh, yeah, I'll leave some of these. Okay, now, if we were to compare ourselves with this current list of what's going on, how much of these do we have? Can we have a name, right? Um, do we bark? No. We poop. We all poop. Everybody poops. I don't know if there's that, that one book. 
you all poop, okay? Um, everybody walks, right? People, we, we ask people, many of us walk. Um, we eat and we sleep, right? So if I had to create also a class person, I would assume that much of that code that I write up here, I'm gonna end up putting in here as well, right? Except for breed, I'm not, there's not a necessarily a breed of person besides Bart. Okay, now, this doesn't necessarily look like an inheritance type of relationship, right? Like a person doesn't really inherit from a dog and a dog doesn't really inherit from a person. But what might both of us, in terms of all of these traits, inherit from? Right, like if there was some, instead of me having to have mammals, mammals right? Or like animal, something, right? We are both, if I think about a dog and a person, they're both living beings, right? They're both animals that walk, sleep, breathe, eat, poop, right? for the most part, okay? And there's some things that dogs do and people do that are a little different, okay? But instead of me having to keep writing the same damn thing all the time, I can think, okay, what could I, where could I write this where both of these classes can take that information and do what they need to do, okay? So what I'm gonna do is back up on class and person and create you can create what a class animal right okay so animal has the following traits deaf initialized and right every animal has a name right name equals name do that at and then Matter accessor. Well, we'll say adder reader. Yeah. Name. Oh wait. Wrong syntax. Okay. So you're adder reader. What were the other pieces that we had? Um let me do this up real quick. Both things poop, walk, eat, and sleep, right? So, death, food, and Oops. And then death, heat, and death, sleep. Okay. Now, we have all these things going on. Say in here, I'm like, walking around, eat, and then sleep. Okay, now, I just wrote all this information up in here, right? So if I wanted to make sure that dog and person, we'll just focus on dog for right now because dog might be good. So, if I want a dog to inherit from animal instead of dealing with all this stuff, right? Instead of me having to repeat this, if I wanted to inherit from the animal class, all I would have to do, let's do this. Oh, wait, we're not inheriting from person, we're inheriting from animal. Animal, there we go. No. Okay. So now there's nothing in this class. Okay. What do you think will happen if I said fluffy equals dog? 
new. And I tell shrink this. Okay. I'll just. Yeah, as well. Not gonna let me. Okay. So I have. Oh, it's not gonna work either. Okay. So I have class animal. It's inheriting here. And then I have fluffy equaling dog dot new. So it's gonna take everything that you put in this name. Right. So what would I like dog to do? What what do I want fluffy to do? I don't care if you know. Okay. You don't have a initialized uh initialized put in. I would name and we'll find out right now. Okay. So dog dot new name. I'm naming it fluffy, right? Okay, so fluffy dot, let's see, first it poops, then, oh, you're right, it walks first. If I have, you know, and if anybody has a dog, we know that this is what they always do. Fluffy dot poop, and then p fluffy dot eat. Oh, name's all the way up here. Cool, and then p fluffy dot sleep. That's like their life every day. Oh, sorry. Thank you for that. All right. Okay, so we're gonna have puppy, I mean fluffy, initialize, and then they're gonna walk around, poop, and then eat and sleep. Right? But we have nothing inside this dog class specifically. So let's see what happens. Ruby. Okay, so even though I've written nothing in dog class, I'm inheriting all the traits that an animal should be able to do. Okay. Additionally, if and then if you included some extra stuff for dogs who like Chew, stick, right, so that's the next step, right? So a dog is not just an animal. A dog's a specific kind of animal, right? So dog does certain kind of things. And it's going to print all the animal stuff first and then all the dog stuff and the dog stuff. It depends on when you call them. So let's think about what makes a dog specific, okay? So we talked about uh, a dog barking, so let's make it bark one, okay? Oh, not that. I always mix up the, y'all remember the command to like get in there and do that? To get to the next, um, never mind, I'll, I'll figure it out later. Okay. So we also have, what's the other method that we said? Okay, we'll give it a breed too. I'm trying to initialize the name from the animal class and the dog class. Yes. So I'll do breed in a second. So for now, we have this bark method, right? So we want Fluffy to bark as well, right? So we can define variables inside of our dog class. Now, if I wanted to, for example, make, um, animal dot new, and I ask kitty, well, I have to give it a name. I asked Kitty to eat, should it be able to eat? Yes, because it's an animal. If I ask Kitty to bark, 
Should it be able to bark? No, right? Because it's written specifically in the dog class. Okay, it's not a very it's not a method that's accessible to the dog class. Okay, but it can do anything an animal can do. Okay. All right, so we saw that we can do a method. Now we want to add a new trait to dog, right? Because a dog is more than just an animal. It has a particular breed. Maybe it has like a particular like facial expression or some other trait, right? Does it have like super fangs or claws? I don't know. Okay. So in this, in this case, we're going to make an initialized method. Okay. To start out the dog with a particular set of traits. So diff initialize. Okay, so the first thing we do with initialize, we know that animal already has an initialize method that's taking an animal's name. So we don't need to repeat that process. Instead, what we will do inside initialize here is we would super. Okay, we're using super. So super says during initialize, go up to this parent class, take all the information that's needed for that parent class, bring it down, and then go from there. So add the extra traits that are necessary for this particular class. Wasn't that already happening? So this was already happening, but because we're adding a new trait, like, Breed equals breed. Okay, we'll double check whether or not we need to actually explicitly write name in here. We might because it might require the set of uh, like set number of arguments, for example, like we had done before. Okay, but we will try that now. So we have Fluffy and what kind of dog is Fluffy? Poodle. <laughs> a turtle poodle okay <laughs> okay so we have fluffy as the name and poodle is the breed okay and we set breed as breed and then we can ask for adder oh we already have no we have adder reader breed specifically for our dog right so that way i can ask hey fluffy what's your breed Okay, so we already know we can um, walk and poop and eat and sleep. So let's comment that out. We don't need all that information. Let's make sure it can initialize appropriately. All right, so we see an initialize, we got an error for line 30, initialize. It was saying we have an argument error. So we have wrong number of arguments. We were given two, we expected one. So that's something important to know, right? We know that our initialized method is going to still go back and do all the work up here of setting at name equals name, but we still need to make sure that our initialized method can take this, the appropriate number of arguments, right? And bring in name, okay? So once we bring in name, when it gets to super, it's gonna go up and be like, okay, what is name? Okay, I'm setting name as name, that's fine. And then it'll go on to say, okay, breed is breed, that's fine. Oh, interesting. I do have to set super. No, I wouldn't have to set super here. If I have super here, hmm. Okay, let me look. Let me look at this information real quick. 
I don't know why it's not. Oh, we could try that. No, here the thing is, is that for initialize, it's going to super and then It's going to super and then super is saying I, I only take one I only take one attribute whereas this is giving me two hold on one second Oh, okay, so we might have to do here. Okay, so that was the issue. Okay. So in here we're giving so because our because our uh, parent class takes a particular um, argument a certain number of arguments we give super those arguments to bring up to the parent class we know that name is going to get taken care of from the supers initialize method from the parents initialize method okay and then the rest of it that's getting brought in can be dealt with what happens if you just initialize it with the delete the name and it will be super name? Okay, so the issue would be that if we're setting an initial we're overriding initialize, right? And we're saying breed equals breed, but we're inheriting from dog. Let's see what happens. <laughs> It might be nothing. Nope. It's wrong number of arguments given to expected one. So, oh, because I gave two here. We expected one. But what which one do we expect? Breed, right? So we're we're inheriting from animal, but we're only giving dog the breed name, right? Okay. So if we've asked for bark and we've asked for breed, so what if I ask for fluffies.name?
Oh, hold on. I did Fluffy. So right now, Fluffy's name is Nil. Okay? You can still do all the other ones. So it's still inheriting, right? So even though we did this initialized method, it's still inheriting all the behaviors and traits from animal. Yeah. We've, when you do this and you don't do super, you're overriding entirely the behavior of the parent. Like what you inherited from parent, you're saying, I'm throwing it away. Mm -hmm. um, so this is inheriting all the information. So basically it's like my parents are giving me all of these traits and behaviors. I can, some are inherent and I can't do anything with them. Some are like, you know, if your parents and the parents before you and the parents before you have all been, you know, nurses and you're like, you know, F that noise, I'm going to be a Navy person, right? Like, I don't want to be that. I want to do this. You throw away that inheritance, uh, inheritance career and you're like, I want to do another thing. Right? That's what you're doing when you overwrite any method that had been written in the parent class. So you, you can basically, as a way to make it easier, you can just pick in all the, um, what, pick in everything from animal and then select the super what you want from them. Like you can go super friend name versus. So here, this is, a, this is the animal's initialize, right? An animal has a name, that's it, right? And then has a set of behaviors. So if down here, I'm saying here, a dog only has a breed. I'm saying a dog doesn't really have a name. It'll answer to name because name is an adder reader up here but name will always be nil because we don't have a way to give the name to the dog class. We, it, and because when we set adder reader, we set name as adder reader. So that means it's only going to read from that class what name is. We've never, we haven't given it a way besides initialize to give it a name after initialize. So there's no way to do it. So once Fluffy gets created, Fluffy has no idea it's Fluffy. It just knows it's a dog. It can bark and can sleep and poop and eat. And it is a poodle, but doesn't know its name is Fluffy anymore. So let's try this on not initialized because initialized is very particular, right? Like let's try it over here on um, let's say, what does, what's particular about a dog? Let's see, maybe they, maybe they walk differently, right? Yeah, dogs kind of like had a trot, like we're just, you know, we're like flow gracefully or whatnot. So here, we can either overwrite the entire walk method from animal, or we can say, super so bring the stuff in that walk is doing and add stuff to it so with four legs and trotting because i'm happy okay Okay, so super, so right now we have walk should return walking around, right? But here we're saying like bring, bring in whatever an animal does and add what a, how a dog walks particularly. Okay, so now if I want to, now if I'm doing this here, Okay, so besides my spacing issue, right? We have walking around that came from animal, and we also have with four legs and trotting because I'm happy, because a dog does 
a walk a particular way, right? Like if we also created a duck class, right? Their walk might be actually like a waddle, right? Or if I asked it to, um, maybe instead of us having um, an animal, maybe an animal has like a, t like a speak method. Every animal knows how to speak, right? Because we're in Disneyland now. Okay, so a dog would say woof woof, I'm a dog, right? And duck would say quack quack, I'm a, I'm a duck, okay? So those particular classes might take what speak does a particular way, okay? And then if we have things that only dogs can do, we can add those methods particular to that dog class, but we know we're inheriting particular behaviors from the animal class that we're inheriting from, right? that we don't need to continuously repeat every time we create a new type of animal. So then what if we now have ostriches and we now have tigers and we now have kitties and we now have humans, okay? These are all different classes that can inherit from animal. They all poop, they all walk, they all eat, they all sleep. Unless we start getting into like things that don't sleep. I don't think there's an animal that doesn't sleep at all. Some have different like time intervals, right? So then you start thinking, okay, well, if this animal has a different time interval of sleep, maybe it's like for two hours, do this thing. Whereas for a human, for eight hours, do this thing, right? And that becomes the way that you consider how you are inheriting certain traits from a parent and then extending what the, um, the sub class or the, the class that's inheriting of a child class um, that that can do that class can do on its own because it's independent or autonomous from the parent class although it is inheriting some traits and behaviors if you want to if you want to like mix both of those together right like I might talk very similar to the way my parents talk but I have a certain thing about me that says yeah, something yeah, differently exactly. yeah so you would utilize super. You don't necessarily have to use this plus, so I wouldn't focus on this plus here. But super is going to, so whenever a, whenever a method is invoked, okay, it starts at this line, finds this line, and then it goes to the next line. So here, it's going to stop here, yield to this one line. Super is going to go to the parent class, take all the stuff, or run the parent, um, method, whatever it returns from running that method, it's going to pull it in to this, um, this line of code and then move on to the next line of code and then finish the method. Okay, so in addition to that, if you put something like that, Yeah. Then you have to pass that parameter to super or automatically Um. Maybe it's like mood. Super has the same thing or automatically. Okay, so let's try this. So are you asking if the parent class had an argument? Okay, so in the same way, if we had walk, like a, a dog walks a particular way based on its mood or an animal walks its particular way on its mood, right? When we're angry, we stop around. When we're happy, we maybe we like, you know, prance around, I don't know. But maybe that is going to change the way that we walk, okay? So maybe in here, This will, we would need to follow the same me mechanisms of um, our scope, right? So we know a local variable is going to do certain things and then larger and larger, right? So if we're saying um, I'm a dog, so I am super, and then instead of mood here, we have that happening here. Okay, and maybe that gets used in here. OK, 
okay? So let's say our parent class um, has a method that takes an argument. In the same way we did before, I'm a dog, so I am super, okay? And then super, we would need to give it the argument mood. Because we know it would require to, it would require an argument, but then super is the one that's taking it. Oh, what mood should should Fluffy have walk in? Hmm. Okay, so happy. Okay, let's double check if this works. Okay, so I'm a dog, so I'm walking around happily, happily with four legs and trotting. Okay, so it took, so it started this method here, it read this line, and then it went to the next line, it found super and it knows it needs an argument, so I bring that argument up to animal. It takes this response. It re it, we're using string interpolation, so it brings happy and puts it in there. Then it comes back down to the dog's walk method and then finishes it off with four legs and trotting. It's only passing first. Not first. This line was evaluated before super. So wherever you I mean, we can see here if we put ha ha oh, we can put mood here. We're just internally super is like a method saying like go to the parent and find this method and do the thing. So if we added mood here, it's a local variable. So inside the scope of mood, the method it's going to run that. It's going to use that local method or the local variable wherever you want. Okay, so I'm a happy dog, so I'm walking around happily with four legs and trotting. Does that make sense, Peter? Yep. Okay. So where you put super is where the parent method is going to run. And if that parent method needs a variable, you'd need to give it to that parent where super is. Okay, so the other thing you might note just from this is that this is kind of dangerous, right? Like I kind of need to know that walk would require a mood. If I don't have access to animal, but I want to inherit from it, like, and I might not know exactly all the things that need to happen with animal, so that can, that can end up being a dangerous coupling between your class and that class. So as you progress as a developer, you'll learn that there needs to be a balance between utilizing inheritance and utilizing other ways of coupling or, or giving relationship to one class to another. And um, tomorrow you'll learn more about ways to do that that doesn't involve inheritance, but for now, um, you're, focus is going to be on learning how to use inheritance. Um, so the challenge for today. How do I call? How do I call breed? So because we set this as an um, instance variable, I can call breed at breed in a method because I use add a reader up here I can call breed as a method inside outside of the class and internally I would use the breed name in my methods as opposed to using the instance variable version of breed Right, right now, because we have Fluffy only taking 
this one information, it doesn't have name. So it only knows that it's a poodle. It doesn't know that it has a name because we took out that part where we had a super name here. So if I add this here and I have super taking that argument and initializing name with the name, then it'll know its name. But we had taken that out earlier. So because we rewrote, we didn't call super uninitialize earlier. So right as it is right now, we're overwriting initialize. We're not even we're not even using the parents initialize method. We're using our own. So we overwrote it entirely. Okay? If we want to use our parents initialize method just like any other method, we'd have to call super within that method. So yeah. You do. If you want, if you want. Okay. If you want to use the parents anything and also extend on that particular same thing inside your class, you have to call super. Otherwise, you're overriding that method entirely. Okay, so you either use your parents just inherently, you use your own by overriding the parents, or you use a mix of them by calling super. So it's like I'm calling on the ancestors of myself and doing and also adding this extra sauce on top of it. Okay, otherwise, you're just erasing it. You're saying, I am now. Like, I don't care what my parents did, I'm doing what I'm doing. Okay, those are the three ways you can do something. You can either naturally take the inheritance as it is, you can override it and take nothing, or you can mix the both and use super. You're giving yourself a superpower by mixing both your parents and yours together. Okay, those are the only three things you can do. Those are the three ways you would utilize inheritance. Okay. Any questions right now about how you're feeling about inheritance? Okay. Um, one other thing that I want to go over is code um, code style. So as you probably saw me going around here, like futzing around um, on like where things should be and whether things should be, you know, a lot of times I'm seeing code that's like this or like that and like people are doing this and then I have this going in like that or have like there's extra stuff like this and then it's like right now I'm using double quotes, but I'm not interpolating. Okay, there's a lot of syntactical things that are going on here that your code might still run, but as a developer it's just not on par with the style that um, your code should be written in, in terms of like cleanliness, um, whether it's, you know, readable um, and that kind of thing. So there's a Ruby style guide that you have um, access to and a really useful gem to get used to the Ruby style guide um, is called RuboCop. RuboCop like RoboCop. If anybody remembers that movie. Okay, so the RuboCop gem. Can you also slack out the, uh, the Yeah, I'll write all the stuff that I that we just went through that um, that I typed up. I'll I'll share that with you. Um, Okay, so RuboCop is a, an open source uh, Ruby gem that utilizes the, um, there's RuboCop. Um, why does this keep? Okay, so RuboCop is a, 
there. It's a gem that you can use in Ruby. You can gem install it, and then you can call RuboCop to check out your stuff. Okay, so it's pretty easy to utilize. So here I can go gem install RuboCop, and then gem will go out, find that Ruby gem, install it, bringing it in. And then I can, instead of calling Ruby to look at my Ruby code, I can ask RuboCop to look at my Ruby code and tell me what I did wrong, okay? And this is something that we, uh, John and I both expect you and developers in the future, right, will expect you to have done before you make a pull request, okay? Because the last thing um, um, a project contributor or a project owner or a company would want is for there to be ugly code in production or for future developers to see like, oh, it's okay to write like really crappy code. Right, we don't want that to happen. So once this finishes, um, you'll see that you would all you would have to do in here is. Does you also have in your uh, editor you have like little dots that track where you click on the link? Yeah. Those yes, that is um, that is an a uh, a package. I'll find which one. Um, I feel like it's brackets, bracket highlighter or something like that. Yeah. Um, I've found it to be really useful because a lot of times you'll get somewhere in like a super like heavy, you know, if else, if else, end, 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 there's a bunch of ifs, right? And then you're like, where did the end go? And it just says like unexpected keyword end. It got to the bottom up here yeah. Yeah. and it couldn't find an end. And you're like, I don't know what it's talking about. This thing will blow, like, it'll actually give you like a red, if it can't find the end of this class or the end of this like block, it'll give a red, like it'll box it in red and be like, you don't have an end to this. So it's really useful. Um, I'll, I'll slack you which um, package that is. Okay. Okay. A package is a, a package for the code editor I'm using. So it's, it's a sublime package. It's typically oh. written as it's packaged. It's probably written like, like a Ruby gem, but a Ruby gem, a node package, these are all basically libraries of code that somebody's written to make life easier, right? So if I wanted to Rubo cop op to RB, which I just wrote, whoa, there's a whole bunch of messes up, 16 offenses, oh my goodness, that's horrible, right? <laughs> so then I can go through this, so look at here, it's saying like, hey, you're doing all this wrong, which is great. <laughs> so now I can say like, okay, here, it's telling at the bottom, prefer single quoted strings when you don't need string interpolation, valid. So I should just make that this, and then this, and then it's better. Yeah, but it's going to tell me all this stuff here, right? So just like our spec, it's going to pull out a bunch of stuff and tell you, hey, you're missing this information. Okay, so all of these pieces of things I can go back and fix because they are not the way they should be. See, it's even saying this end is not aligned with the, the depth that it's closing. Okay. So I expect that everybody try and utilize this for some of your files um, so you can clean them up. And then uh, when you do a pull request, we won't give you like, this end is wrong, this, side, this quote is wrong. And then we can focus on giving you like appropriate feedback, like tell me why you did, did things this way or, or answer the questions that you actually have instead of focusing on like, I can't read this code. Cool, all right, so I'm gonna stop recording here.